right, it's time to light this candle, get this conversation ongoing. So uh, this is the first in kind of a new series of uh, of not interviews, but just dialogues with photographers and creatives. And today we have a familiar face with us, Elena Dorfman, who uh, is someone that I teach with in, in Albania and is a very accomplished photographer amongst many other things. Elena, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you, Dan? I'm good. Is is LA sweltering? Uh, it's about 95 degrees still. It's hard <laughs> to imagine that it's actually October, almost October 1st, because we're in full summer here still. I don't want to rub it in, but this morning when I went outside to watch the sunrise, I had a vest and a long sleeve hooded sweatshirt and I was still cold. So I long so, for, I'm dripping as we're speaking. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's good. So yeah. the, the point of today's talk is really to talk about the workshops, uh, the Albania workshops, but also just to catch up and talk about uh, photography in general. And, and with that in mind, I have some some uh i don't know like icebreaker questions here that we can that we can start with and and you won't be judged on the answers no number yeah. one yes yes you can only choose one for the rest of your career film or digital oh <laughs> uh, hmm. well i shoot only digital now but i long for film how's that for an answer i knew you would weasel out of that one and end up in the middle yes um a, a sub <laughs> sub question of that it made me uh think about something today i was putting on a t-shirt that says i love fuji film i got it from uh brandon remler and i was like why don't why doesn't elena have a gfx camera like the 100 megapixel range finder the small one because it seems like that would be such a great camera for you have you thought about that I have actually. Yep. It's absolutely on the list. And, you know, I want to say that I've been shooting digitally for a long time, but of course I grew up in the dark room, grew up making prints, have such a love and appreciation of prints. And actually I'm working a little bit in cyanotype now, which is again, uh, getting me back kind of in the chemical process and using mm -hmm. the sun, which has been great. I also just went through a whole stack of old Polaroids that I hadn't seen in 20 years. And it was amazing just to have my hands on the Polaroids again. So the fervor is rising. You know, it's interesting. I, I went for a hike the other day with a photographer named Rashad Taylor, who has a show at uh, Obscura Gallery right now. Super nice guy. And he shoots a lot of tin types and he shoots a lot of four by five and eight by 10. I, I don't think he even has a digital camera. So, and he's doing really amazing assignments for, you know, G Nat Geo and all kinds of stuff. But I mentioned to him, there's the machine called an LBT Rhino. And I don't know if they're still in existence or not. I think they are, but they're film writers. So you take digital files and you write it back to film and then you use those, like you write back to negatives and then you print in the wet dark room or do whatever alternative process you can. I heard that Salgado was doing that, that he was shooting on Canon full frame digitals, but was writing back to film and then having his printer print in the dark room. So just planting the seed, you know, Thank you. Yes. starting out yeah. with a ginormous digital file would be good. But but I, I digress. We're getting off we're getting off track here. So you're you're noncommittal on the film and digital. I expected that. I have, um, lo I have love of both. OK, uh, the other one is hot climate or cold climate. Oh, I'm a cold climate person, 100. percent I'm I'm sh slowly becoming a cold climate person. I used to be a hot climate person, and now I think I'm I think I'm cold as well. Um, window seat or aisle? Oh, window, committed window. Really? Committed. Oh no, I'm aisle all the way. I don't. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> and the, thing, and the, the worst part is that I am like narcoleptic on planes. I fall, I fall asleep before it takes <laughs> off. I sleep the entire flight and that makes everyone in the middle and aisle have to deal with me. So I, right. I pre-apologize before we take off that I'm going to twitch and also be a problem. <laughs> um, not twitch, not. <laughs> Wish there were more like you. Do you never get up? I get up a lot, which really irritates people, but I for some reason, just started in the window. I think because for years I shot out the window. Yeah. And I also felt like it's kind of a cocoon. Like I can lean. I yeah. can, I have a room for years when I read newspapers, I used to read whole newspapers on planes and I could just sort of have a little extra room. Uh, now I'm, I am, I, I see the beauty of the aisle seat. I really yeah. do. Yeah. I'm I mean, so the beauty of the window is you only have humanity on one side. It's like right. that safe zone and you can lean against it and do all that. But I'm still, I want to be able to get out in case yeah. of emergency. And now with all the, all the, you know, weirdos on planes, but okay. Next question. 
you can only go, uh, we're going to Manhattan and you can only go to one. Are you going to the art museum or are you going to the photo gallery? Um, I can only go to one. Yep. I'm first going to go to the art museum. Oh, that's a telling point. That's a, (laughs) that's a tell people. Uh, okay. That's interesting. I would go to the art museum as well. Um, which is real, probably really telling because I don't do like fine artwork and I'm more of a journalism guy, but I would go to the art museum. I would. In fact, in Frank, frankly, above both of those, I would probably go to the natural history museum first. Right. Spectacular. Okay. Last one, paper books or digital books. Oh, paper books. Yeah. I knew that was a, that was like an easy one. I knew that, um, very rarely uh, okay i know one or two people who just fully commit to kindles and that's it but most mostly paper okay i feel a little warmed up now yeah, um, let's too. talk about the workshops i i listed a couple of points that and this has been so, the first point's been a bit haunting for me over the past couple of months after coming back from albania and that the first point is about appreciation and we spoke about this earlier this was the, the last time we went to albania which was only a few months ago, beginning of the summer, uh, was the first international trip that I'd had in over two years because of COVID. And so the first, I taught online, but hadn't taught in person in over two years, hadn't traveled internationally in over two years. And and I didn't f- truly appreciate in detail like I should have until I was back. Now, during the class, you know, there's a lot on the table. There's a lot of movement. There's a lot of different variables on the table, but it's still, you sent me a little film trailer uh, a couple of days ago and 20 seconds into that film, all I could, all I wanted to do was drive to Albuquerque to the airport and fly back to Albania. What, have you ever experienced that or did you feel anything similar with that? I have, I have to say, I mean, I for the last couple of years, I've been going uh, kind of twice a year. So I so I've been going very regularly, not only doing the workshops, but also doing another body of work thereafter. And I have no other plans to be back until next spring when we do the next round of workshops. And I have to say, I physically miss it. Like I every day think, God, I so miss that place. I just <laughs> want to be there. Yeah, it's the same. I think about the food. I think about the people. I think about the landscape. And I'm not a landscape photographer, as you know, but that when I talk to people, first of all, you talk to people about Albania. And when my my friends who are a bit on the, more on the outdoorsy side, like I ran into a photographer here a, a week or so ago, who's a really good professional action sport photographer. And I was like, you know, the Albanian Alps. And he just kind of looked at me like, what are you talking about? I said, this is the most incredible thing I've ever seen. And there's like no one there. So the Valbona Valley is like, I wake up in the morning thinking about it. Yeah. I love the food. I love the Rocky. I love the the streets of Tirana. I think Tirana is a super cool, livable, walkable city that I just, you know, think, man, why, you know, if I was going to live in a city somewhere, that's a place that I could definitely be. Yeah. Agreed on all fronts. I mean, the the thing about Albania that most people, first of all, don't know about it. And people say, well, what's it like? And it's hard to describe. It's a very distinct and unique um, culture. However, if you're going to mash a few cultures together, I would do sort of it's a, a mix of Greece and Italy with Turkey running through. Of course, it was it was. Um, you know, the the Turks were there for hundreds of years um, and they're they're very aligned with Italy in terms of it, it looks a lot like Italy and the southern half of the country looks a lot like Greece. For example, when we were driving, doing the southern workshop last year, leaving a beautiful little city called Korcha, which is actually where my family still lives, um, and heading toward Permet, which is where the beautiful yeah. natural springs are, um, we just passed a wall of the most gorgeous green mountains of the Greek mountains. So we were passing the borders of Greece. Um, you know, it's so it's sandwiched in. It's a beautiful little Mediterranean country that's full of high, spectacular mountains, as you said, yeah. and surrounded by three seas, you know, the Adriatic, the Ionian, and the Mediterranean. It's really unusual. And yeah. you can cover it in a couple of days. I kept thinking, oh, the South, you know, we had been to the North before, never been to the South. And I kept thinking, oh, the South is going to be flat. It's got to be flat. And then you get to the South and it's just these massive mountain ranges and some of the most incredible water features I've ever seen. And again, I think about that all the time. You're very slowly. And this brings me to the second point, which is about timing. 
I just saw a documentary about hydropower in Albania. I just saw mm-hmm. about 30 seconds of a moto a motorcycle adventure tour couple or group that got lost in Albania. And that's really since 2019, I went the first time. That's really the first time that I've started to see it pop up. And I think timing wise now is a very interesting time because finally people are going, it hasn't happened so much here in the States, but I think Europeans are like, oh yeah, you can go to Albania now. When I bring up Albania here in the States, it's always the same thing. They think I'm talking about the Baltics. They think it's, you know, one person was South America. One person was like, oh my God. Yeah, the, the yeah. War, in, war in Ukraine is right there. And I'm like, oh, man, nobody knows where it is. But I think timing-wise, you couldn't pick a better time to go. I mean, timing-wise, is re- it, it, as you said, it's really a super interesting time. I've been going for 30 years. Only in the last five years have I started to hear other languages. And now people are getting pretty hip to Albania. They're seeing what a, what a gem it is. So it's I would encourage people to come with us now because I don't know what it will be in five years. You know, it's a little place that has it it, it, now is such an interesting time to to go because they're becoming um, the restaurants are great. The lodging is great. You know, they're 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 dialing it up to accommodate people who are coming. It's still overrun, but. We feel the we feel the 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 tremors beneath because sure. you know it's a people are discovering that it's an incredibly cool place and that very few people have seen it. So and it's in the middle of you know not in the middle of Europe but it's a European country that was sealed off for thirty years. That was thirty years ago. However, it's only just being discovered now. So it's a really interesting time to be there because there are a lot of changes. They've also um, Tirana is a super cool city as you mentioned growing cosmopolitan um really interesting cultural uh you know museums centers of culture of religion of history um great food albania is also the one of the originators of the slow food movement so food is really important there food is really delicious as you know and you mentioned rocky rocky is the national drink and it's delicious we drink a lot of it while we're there it's potent potent rocky it's potent so now's an interesting time to go to shoot pictures to make pictures to discover it and it's it's really a rich place and the other thing i'll say about it that i think really sums it up for me is it's a it's a country that is still surprising a lot of european countries we've kind of seen it there the globalization has hit everywhere until last you know maybe a year ago i had not seen a single chain store a single chain restaurant until last year when of course the first kentucky fried chicken came in that was a heartbreak for me yeah but it it is not it has not been commodified like the rest of europe it's still surprising weird things are happening which is great for picture making and it's funny and it's fun and it's really beautiful you know, the funny thing, I as we came back from Albania, I ended up in Maine and I met this couple that um, had never been to Albania. They I, uh, Again, they didn't know where it was and they just automatically assumed that it was really dangerous. And I said to them very casually, not even really thinking about, uh, I just said, well, it's a lot safer than Santa Fe. And they kind of looked at me puzzled and said, you don't mean Santa Fe, New Mexico. And I said, yeah, that's where I live. I said, Albania is way safer than Santa Fe. And they just said that, how can that be? And I said, well, you know, I can list you some of the activities that's going on here in Santa Fe of late and, um, you know, not, not some, not so such great things. And never once of being over there anywhere that we were at any time did I ever even feel like a shadow of something where I thought, oh, this is like, I really have to watch out. And after having done photography for as long as I have in places where I have had to like really watch what I'm doing, that's a, it's a pretty fantastic thing to like check that off the list of saying, I, this is not something I need to be worried about. Um, not at all. The other thing that for me personally, and like photography for me now is very different than it was 10 or 15 years ago when I was doing it as a living and doing it much more frequently than I do now. And now I sort of find myself falling back into this safe zone of like what I call, what I love to talk about, which is spacing, which is what I would describe as like distance between the compositional elements in your frame. And there's a sweet spot for me where 
if in doubt, I'm always going to put myself in that same situation because that's where I tend to make the best pictures. But that's kind of a lazy approach to things and, and frankly, kind of boring. And one of the things that's fun for me and also really frustrating because I'm not as skilled as I as I should be in this way is the the diversity of the spacing that we encounter over a 10 day period. So it's like streets of Toronto. And then you've got like Doris on the coastline where you've got this like intermediate spacing, which is my favorite thing. And then you've got like Valbona Valley where you have this massive spacing. And do you think about photography in that same way when you're shooting or is it just doesn't matter? You just go for it. That's interesting. I haven't thought of it that way. Um, I think of it in terms of, um, I mean, I guess it's more of an undercurrent of a feeling. I know when I'm in a city that, you know, how I'm moving and photographing within the city, within the confines of walls, of people moving, of I'm trying to capture the motion, the energy, um, the feel for the city, the feeling of the city. And then I shoot a lot of landscapes. I love landscapes. So when we go to a place like Duras, the coastal sort of northern coastal city, um, I love capturing the weird ocean landscape and the promenade. There's so much going on there. And in the north, as you mentioned, the north is a spectacular place where you're you kind of you 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 breathe a little more freely and you have this wide open expanse where you can both capture it wide and have time to come in close. On the yeah. southern trip, it is um very varied. There it's it's a little more um we move more quickly than we do in the northern trip. The southern trip has um, a few cities. It has a UNESCO heritage city. Um, it has uh, the, sometimes we go to the sea. I'm not sure if we're, we're not actually going to the sea on this next trip, but mm -hmm. we do a kind of a horseshoe around the southern, the south of the country, which is spectacularly beautiful. And we move kind of day to day to day. We're seeing different things. So I guess my goal is always to try to make a picture that I haven't made before in all of those places. So yeah. whether it's, I'm considering it spacing, landscape, people, street, I'm trying to always figure out how to make something that I haven't seen, as I'm sure you're doing all the time too. For me, it's about it's about getting, out, getting into a scene and realizing, oops, that was me. I'm gonna go ahead and dismiss that. Uh, it's getting into a scene and realizing the ingredients are there for something great. Yeah. And then you realize it and you go, don't mess this up. Don't mess this up. Like the ingredients are here. Now it's on, it's on me or on you to do what it is we're supposed to do. That right. is like the most incredible feeling in the world when you realize, wow, there's something here, there's something here. And, you know, in the States, it's, it's one thing to do that. When you go to Albania, a place like that, for me, it, that feeling happens so frequently. It happens on a daily basis. It doesn't mean that I'm going to walk away with something great because I'm not always great with the camera, but you're like, oh man. And it's like this shot of adrenaline that pushes you to go, I got to look harder. I got to, I got to do more. And I think, I guess that's really the point of being on a workshop like that. I think also that's interesting. Um, being in a workshop also, what it does is one, it gives you a, 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 a week span to just think about photography and think about and have creative thoughts, kind of move where you want to move creatively. You're also with like-minded people who are doing the same thing. And so you're talking about photography, you're you're creating together, you're looking at people's work if, if you want to, you're sharing work. You know, there's a lot of growth that's happening. And you're also in a way, you know, you're trying not to shoot alongside somebody. You're 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 moving out. And I think that's a really good exercise is how to do something different within a group. And yeah. everyone, at least on our last trips, ha has done that. They've all found their way really true to their own selves and their own, you know, the own, their own pictures, the pictures they want to make. I think everybody did that. And that's a real, that's a, that's a real pleasure, you know, to be able to have a week where you can, you can do that and also have access, you know, to us, to be able to talk to us and to be able to shoot with us, go out with you, get advice from you, work on projects that you want to work on now while we're moving through the country, because we move through the country while we're shooting, while we're eating while we're drinking, while we're meeting people, while we're talking, it's pretty full on. And it's, it, again, I keep saying it's fun. It's, it's, it, we, we make a trip that I hope is really fun for people, really enjoyable. And then you leave with a, with a, you know, advanced set of skills that you didn't necessarily come with. So, um, 
Did I answer the question and then some? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think one of the things that you you sort of skirted by was the fact, and this was what was interesting to me, was that it's about photography, it's about writing, it's about mixed media. We had a couple of students on this on the last trip who were who were doing sketches and watercolors as well. Um, I was really driving people to write and take notes that they could then incorporate into the the sort of real time publications that we were making, and I think that was fun for me was to see. The, the students, the Schusters, when they were doing their sketches, and I was like, why am I not doing sketches? Like, that's a really cool thing. Now, I can't sketch like they can, but to your point, everybody navigates to their own look and feel. And when you look through the PDFs of the students, they're so completely different to your point yeah. is that everybody has it. You know, if you're coming from Northern Europe or you're coming from Latin America, you have different sensibilities about the world, different visual aesthetic styles, different architecture, and it's so reflected in that work, I didn't tell you, but I got, I got Rudy's PDF, um, a couple of days ago, I just went through it on the iPad and marked it up and his is completely different than anybody else's. And I, we, we talked a little bit about it and I think he's going to end up making two different things, sort of okay. one for himself and then one for like public, public view. Um, but yeah, it's really fun, fun to work through that. You mentioned something, and I also just talked about it a little bit, which is one of the components of the class is if if a student wants to do so, is to build a publication in real time. And that is a very different set of skills from making pictures or sketching. You know, it comes with a whole different sort of language of putting it together. But it's something you can do if you want to and not. And if you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. But it's there if you want it. Right. Yeah, I, and it's I of course, am jaded because I'm going to do it. Yeah, I mean, it's a great thing to do. And I think people might be intimidated at first, like, how am I going to do this? I don't know how to do it. But every single person at the end said that was an incredible exercise. And it also, you know, it the part of the trip is then becomes very purpose driven. So you have something that you you're going to make that you're going to create. That's your yeah. work. Again, you've you, you've learned a, a new set of skills, which is how to think beyond maybe just taking a picture. It's how to put a body of work together, how to um, then edit that work really well, which will can last you a lifetime. Knowing how to edit your work is an incredibly valuable tool to have. You learn how to sequence your work because you're, you're potentially putting it in a magazine format. You're learning how text and story, even just wording, random words, or you take something from a history book or whatever you want. You can add to the your publication, you can add to the pictures and you just keep building. And it's really, it's a lovely way to move through the week because not only are we shooting, exploring, hanging out, we're also really making something pretty cool for everybody. Yeah, I think it's weird. I, I think there's there's good pressure and there's bad pressure. And I think what the magazine does, building a magazine or a book in real time, gives you this a little bit of good pressure where it's, okay, story is king. This is the idea. Like I go to Albania, I come back to the States. Someone says, oh, you went to Albania. What was that like? Now, now comes the chance where I can explain the story of what I was doing. And the book is like the physical transformation of that story. It can be as personal, it can be as historical, it can be as fabricated as you want it to be. I mean, there's nothing stopping someone from saying, I'm going to do a magic realism piece exactly. on Albania from my trip. And that's really what's interesting. And I think that's why uh, all the students or a lot of them were like, oh, this is not exactly what I thought. It could be anything I want this to be. And so that that's always fun for me. But again, I'm jaded. And um, I got my zine, my zine back, my version one of the zine, which is just awful. I'm, I, I'm going to redesign the whole thing, what I knew it would be. So I want to see it. It's the break the ice zine. I mean, I think the thing is that you just said is we're really there just to usher people's own creativity and, and direction along. We're there to support whatever you want to do. I we're there to a hundred percent support and offer as much help and advice and um, insight based on our own experience and knowledge as we can. So that's Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah, that's really it. Um, yeah. So tell me what you you've you've mentioned what you like about it, but what keeps you going back? What, what keeps, keeps you going <clears throat> there? So I have always been a fan of going back to the same country again and again. I'm I'm not one of these people who counts stamps in my passport. I don't say, oh, I was, you know, I hit 100 countries by the time I was 25 years old. I don't really care about that. And I think that's probably because of the style of photography that I studied, which was 
journalism and there's real no there's no substitute for time and access when it comes to journalism. So the only way that you're going to build any kind of body of work or body of meaning is to go back again and again and again. Plus to think that I can go to a country for 10 days in 2019 and 10 days or two weeks in 2022 and somehow miraculously exhaust the photographic opportunities or the experience opportunities in that country is just impossible. It's, I don't want to say it's insulting, but it's, you know, it'd be like someone coming to the States for 10 days and going to New York and San Francisco and going, yep, pretty much know everything about that place. And so I just love going back and building on what I have. And also looking at what I have that worked and what didn't, and then going, I have to be better. I want to go back and add sound and better writing and right. all these different things. The challenge for me, and I also love the familiarity of some of the things, familiarity of knowing about Rocky, knowing about the food, knowing some of the play, uh, people like Ilya and, and your cousin, you know, your family members. Gazi, the people who are involved in the workshop around us. I love those guys, you know, and talking yeah. to them and hanging out. And it's just a really, it's a highlight of the year for me, for sure, to go and to go and do these. And I think you said it earlier, it's really a privilege for us to be able to do this kind of thing where you're able to take 10 days and say, I'm going to put everything else in my life on hold. And I'm just going to, uh, and I heard this described the other day in a really beautiful way. I'm not just looking, I'm seeing. I'm right. really trying to see what's what's here. And um, yeah, I could I would do this all the time if I could. Yeah, me too. Shall we take a look at a couple of the PDFs, a couple yeah. of the books that were made? Yeah, I'm going to share my screen. Everybody, mm -hmm. everybody uh, brace themselves. I'm going to see if this works here. You never know. You just never know yeah, these no, days true. with uh, with this tech. We're going to start with um, Aura's. Aura is um, hopefully... This opens up. There we go. Aura's based in Switzerland. She's awesome. She's a gem. Aura shoots all the time. This is a to me is a very impressive thing. She's doing projects in in Switzerland, local things. She's traveling all the time. I am guilty of saying, oh, I'm going to do this thing. And then it gets pushed back because of work and pushed back. And then people are like, hey, where's that thing? And I'm like, I haven't started yet. And so I love the fact that she's out blasting all the time. Yes. So I love this cover. Her, her book is called Glimpses of Albania. And for uh, for those who haven't been to this specific location, which I'm guessing is pretty much everyone, this is the Hosha's uh, bed, who was the the dictator. And this mm -hmm. is in the underground bunker, which is, and you could, you're better at explaining this than I am, but um, this is a pretty, uh, an un unbelievable scene when you're standing there looking at this. It's an underground five-story bunker that the former dictator who closed the country off for 50 years had built in order to save himself and the people in his government. So it's, it was unearthed, let's say, in uh, 2015, and it's a pretty spectacular place to walk through. Again, it's a, it's a five-story nuclear bunker, underground nuclear bunker. And so this is, these are scenes from, from there. It's, it, it's his bed, it's, actually. Yeah, this is his bed, which oddly enough is high up in the bunker. That That's the one thing that didn't make sense to me. You would think he'd be five stories down. No, right. he wants maybe a little- Maybe it was for his wife. Maybe it was a little fresh air. You yeah. Know, a little fresh air. All right, so we are uh, moving down and uh, I can't see. So it says um, my little cameras are in Emerging the way. Emerging from but, darkness. Emerging, Emerging from, from darkness. darkness. And this was a blacksmith that she photographed in- um, Korcha. Korcha, yeah, that's a great city. Korch is a great city, a great small city, full of artisans, full of cafes, cobblestone streets, really lively. The boulevards are packed every night. And with our fixer, we found an amazing um, blacksmith and he brought us to his shop and people had a chance to shoot. And this is what Aura got here. Yeah. Now this I love. So this is sort of her, um, again, her half title page. So she's got the title at the top. She has her name at the bottom and this really interesting little um, photo filled triangular shape on the left. I think this is what I would call a very atypical spread. And I, and I love it for exactly that reason. I also love the fact that she stacked up her name or a Berkeley. And I, I think this is a really nice spread, even though there's no, I mean, very small piece of art on here, but I just really like, like this treatment a lot. Me too. The past is not dead. It's not even the past, a quote from Faulkner. And that is, um, one of the many, many tunnels. I believe that's the tunnel on the way to the bunker. 
That's the yeah. lead into the bunker. You go through this tunnel first that brings you into the bunker. And this is a spread I love. This yes. is um, that's House of Leaves, which is the the uh, surveillance museum. The dictator had this unbelievable uh, surveillance program where much, most of the country was under surveillance, which is now a museum and uh, which is in Toronto. And I just love I love the type treatment and I love this spread a lot. Yeah, me too. And this was kind of a highlight. Pretty much everyone made an image of this, a horse with a gas mask, which I had not seen before. I'd seen this in like films of World War I, but I had not seen it in person, like what it actually looked like. And the masks on the wall behind it, I, that that room was intense to say, the le to say the least. And pretty much everybody made images of that horse, but they were all completely different. Yeah, it's very chilling to see, yeah. Here we get a little more text. I like her oversized the bro the breakout copy the words in a different um, a different font size than the others. It sort of allows you to just skip through this. And this was a scene that Aura just knocked out of the park. I did. I was like right there. I didn't see any of this, and she, she walked out of this moment with like six frames. That I was like, oh, that's a good frame. That's a good frame. And by the way, that's not like posed. Those people aren't posing for her. She's just like, you know, working uh, naturally, journalist, journalistically. And yeah, she walked out with a bunch of great frames of this. She did. Markets in Toronto. Another, another street in Toronto. This was one of those moments she walked away from, walked away with that I was, uh, nope, didn't see that, missed it. <laughs> Nice natural framing. This was in um Jura Castra. Yeah, Jura Castra. That's a cool town too. Very beautiful town. It's one of the world uh the UNESCO heritage uh sites. And it's a really beautiful high mountain town, cobblestone streets, gorgeous fortress, gorgeous museum. And um this old warplane was there, which was pretty cool. She did a That's good it. job capturing through. Yeah, nice natural framing. All right, let's um gonna close this one and we're gonna look at one more which is David Schuster's, go to view, two pages. So what I liked about what David did was, and, and David is a former, like back in the day, press, press photographer, and he committed one camera, one lens, and everything black and white. And he processes his frames, his photos in a very specific way. And what I liked too about the way he operated was he just attacked like, you know, the the car door would open and he would disappear. And you, I would look down, he's four blocks away, just like boom, boom, boom. And he just, he really was sort of like on target, on task the whole time. And he just committed to this look, which I think is what I would call eerie and dramatic. And um, it was re really solid. And also Very if you- if you look at that typeface on the front, that was not his original typeface. And that one of the things that we did was say, look, you need to find something that's a little bit more fitting to where we are, what you're talking about, what you're doing. So this was like the second or third version of this where um, he had mixed up the typefaces a little bit. Very nice. That's a, that's a decent looking spread for me. Two column text. He's got a little background image behind that text faded back. And this is done in the Blurb soft software. So he's he's jumping through some hoops to do this, but it looks looks pretty good. And I also want to say he spent, you know, he spent a good amount of time. Everyone really did just thinking about where we were, the history of the country, talking to people. David, this, this is an example, obviously, where he's using a lot of text and he's thinking a lot about the story he's telling with the book. It's certainly you don't have to use this amount of text. You can use a word occasionally if you want to but david really he he did some research and really spent time thinking about how, what he wanted to pair with his images yeah and i think for me i have an audio recorder and the first zine that i did in 2019 the vast majority of that was overheard dialogue i just took the dialogue that i'd overheard at breakfast or in or in conversation or out at night and i just repurposed it into the into the zine which gave it a real sort of local flavor and also a diversity that i probably wouldn't have come up with on my own and I think I just the last thing I want to say is there are no rules. Neither of us teach with any rules. It's it's for you to explore and figure out. There are no rules to what you um, how you make your books or how you shoot. It's just for you to, you know, figure out your way. We're there to help you figure out your way. That's, That's a gorgeous. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he I think what he sees, you know, is he's letting his shadows go and he sees the drama in the light, whether it's 
whether it's early morning, late afternoon, very directional light, or it's 12 noon, like the image on the left, that's not the world's greatest light. And what he's done is just say, I'm going to expose for that highlight, let the shadows go, get that little sort of rim lighting on the fence fence row. It's a simple image, but it's translated through he, how he sees the world. And that's what's really fun is we get to work with them and sort of not even help them shape it, but just, you know, push in this direction or add little pieces in. But I think this looks really good as well. And I think everybody also was like, wait a minute, I, I was there too. I didn't see any of that that you saw. You know, I didn't, none of that. The light didn't capture me the way it did you. I didn't, I didn't turn at the same moment you did. I mean, obviously not, but he just is, he's revealing, he's revealing what the rest of us may not have seen in such a beautiful and dramatic way. Yeah. And like the image on the right, that's, he's just hunting all the time. He's yeah. just hunting, hunting, hunting. And that's a really fun thing to watch. Um, and he's, he's good at it. Hang on. Let me see here. I keep uh, my little uh, arrow keys are not working. So the next spread. Um, yeah. Again, these are from the old abandoned factory. Uh, man, that place was, you could spend a lifetime on that location. It was incredible. Albania has some great uh, communist era factories that are still there. And as much as we can, we stop, usually spontaneously, jump out and spend an hour exploring these old sp old spaces that are really quite stunning. And to the right, the mosque, you know, for those who don't know, Albania is a mix of religions, although for many years it was it had no religion whatsoever. It was mandated by the government, no religion, mm -hmm. but it's the mix of Orthodox Christianity uh, which is what my family is, Muslim and Catholicism. And everybody exists very well together. Yeah, that it is. It's incredible. Yeah. All right, let's look at the next one. <clears throat> yeah, this is bringing back some memories. Yep, Schuster out hunting. I mean, to me, yeah. like I look at the image in the middle and I would never photograph that. That's not right. something I would do. And that's right. And that, but when I look at it, I go, I actually like that frame. Like I should have been seeing stuff like that. And that's what's so fun is to, we're all basically in the same area. And the work that comes back is you just never know what we're going to see. And also, I mean, this speaks very much to how work is sequenced, how it's chosen and sequenced. So these images work all work well together, which we all worked on together, which is how to pair your images, what images work well together, how you how you marry um, work to make to to execute your vision. And I think he's done it really well. And I think everybody did. And just just so you for for those of you watching who see this shoots during the day and then we're editing Elena and I are working with the students and editing could be at sunrise in Balbona or could be at you know 10 o'clock at night and then as a group we review so everybody's able to present their work in front of the group and then the group provides feedback and that's really fun in fact a couple of the students have since we returned had the a couple of things they mentioned about being critiqued were from other students and saying i know that you know i heard this because three people told me the same thing and it's um it's really fun it's it's yeah. probably a little scary if you've never done it but this too uh, the the picture on the left and the one on the right in particular i was probably 20 feet away from him i think when he made the picture on the right and i love that pic i think that's such a solid such a solid photograph Yes, we had just stopped to buy some fruit and there was a kind of a parking lot alley that we all kind of wandered down and it, it was a little bit grubby. And David made this really compelling picture there. Almost, I think we got a few pages left. But what I see, by now you can see the consistency of what he's doing. He, he's not mixing, you know, 50 different kinds of looks and colors and black and whites and tone stuff. He's committing to this one thing, which is his style. It's not necessarily my style or anybody else's, but it's his. And that's the thing that he did. Now, I tried to pry that lens out of his hands. You I was did. like, he only brought one lens. And I was like, hey, you know, I use Fuji as well. I've got all these other lenses. And he was just like, there was not even a comment. There was not, there was no <laughs> crack you. in that door. <laughs> he was like, go away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, gorgeous. Again, like the image in the middle to me is such a simple photograph, but it's so telling when you understand where it is and what that place represented. It's the fort up above um, of Skoder. Right. And it's that. It, and when you understand what that is, that image with a little caption, a little piece of data just yeah. explodes into this his, history lesson. And also the way the images work together, the spread 
works beautifully. So you're cap you're you're looking at the you're you're captivated by the light on the left, and then it moves you straight through to the right. Excuse me, to the light on the right into the clouds on the next spread. I mean, uh, he, he's done a really good job. And again, he David and his wife Mickey came on both trips. This is the yep. this is the book from the northern trip. Yep. Yeah, that on the right, the picture on the right is it gives you a little taste of what the Valbona area looks like. And yes. um, yeah, it is it is a, a haunting in a positive way because once you go there and look at it, one of the students said something like, um, I think it was Sam who lives in the UK. Sam was like, if we were in Europe right now, there'd be 200 people in this parking lot, like in full kit getting ready to hike. And there was like us, we were the <laughs> only people around. Yeah. It really, the thing about Albania, it gets under your skin. It's really a place that just sort of lingers and lasts and it, the, the spaces and the people really stay with you. And I think we're getting close. I think this is a 20 pager. Yeah. We, we can end anytime you want also, yeah. or just run through. I'm just going to skip through here. I think this is a really nice frame on the left. He's balancing yeah. landscape and people and things like that. That's not, yeah. not, not easiest to do. And um, and then there's an image at the end, which he had as a joke, which is not actually him. People think this is his author photograph and it's not. It's just a, another guy in Albania with a camera, which <laughs> is in line. But yes, really, really nice work. Really nice work. Yeah, it's great to see the work again to revisit it. And yeah, we have two trips coming up. One in the southern trip for a week is coming up um, mid-May of 2023. And then the northern trip to Valbonia, Valbona, Skoder and... Tirana is the first week of June. So I'm really looking forward to it. Um, yeah. Oh, and I'm gonna have new, I'm gonna have a new camera by then and some new lenses. Of course you are. Which of course, of course is why what makes your photographs good, right? Is whatever camera you're using. Yeah. Of course, of course. That was a joke, people. Yeah. <laughs> so well, that's a pretty good recap. A pretty good, uh, I think that's a pretty good place for us to um depart. I'll let you get back to profuse sweating in, in Los Thanks. Angeles. Thank you very go, much. I'm going to go get my down packa. Get and, your packa. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, where, where can people find you and where can they find the information about this? Yeah. So two places, one on Instagram, we're wide angle creative, um, the website that has the itineraries and uh, all the information you'll need is wide angle photo tours dot com t o u r s dot com um you can also just write to me elena at elena dorfman dot com and i can send you any information you want if you sign up through the wide angle um newsletter wide angle site you'll get a newsletter that's coming out soon we have a new video up um there's always new information coming so yeah don't be shy ask any questions um perhaps dan and i will have a open session at some point where we answer people's questions if they have them and um, yeah, that's where they can see it. Wide Angle Creative on Instagram, Wide Angle Photo Tours on the web. Fantastic. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, you, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you taking the time to do this. And uh, I cannot wait to go back. And hopefully we can connect in person here in the States before May uh, in Albania. I think we will. All right. Bye. Bye. See you.